think if we want to understand why so few women are represented in public institutions, uh, we really have to think about uh, the fact that women were restricted to the domestic arena for most of human of the human story. It was history. Here's a story in the public. All the institutions were occupied by men exclusively. And it's a very recent phenomenon for women to actually be part of the public domain. Um, because, of course, that's where power is located. That is where the resources are located. That's where voice can be heard. That's where communication and technology are developed. And so the point I was making in my presentation is that exclusion is an active, systematic process of keeping women away from sites of power by constructing them as mothers, as wives, as private individuals who belong to men in families which are constructed as natural places for women, women as feeders, as, you know, subsistence, subsistence producers, you know, all the things that are about women being invisible in our societies. And so when you look at the statistics, you have to link it to the historical narratives about who women have been in the human story. 20 years, women have increased by 10 or 15 percent. It's tremendous, given that for thousands of years, women were invisible. They were locked away. And in many societies in the world today, women are still very privatized within the key patriarchal institution, which is the heterosexual family, you know, and their bodies are hidden away, not only f on the basis of religious uh, norms and, and beliefs, but also in terms of the privatization of women's bodies as men's property, you know. So women have made tremendous strides when you look at it with hindsight in relation to past. Uh, strategies to keep women out of the public. We still, most of us, carry the baggage of learned socialization that you know the woman's place is in the domestic arena and that your voice should not be heard. You should only be a provider of services for your family or your community. You should be a volunteer. You should be altruistic. You should always give up. So it's going to take us a long time to unlearn that baggage, to put it down and move forward. Learning the narrowness and the constraints of heterosexism is very, very important because that will enable women to leap forward. You know, and the numbers will escalate and the politics will be more courageous, will be more radical. You know? Because what does radical mean? It means returning to the root, to your integrity, to your self-love, to the ownership of your body, of yourself, you know, the exploration of your creativity, the beauty that you arrive with. You're a complete human being. You don't need anything else. You just have to explore what you arrive with and develop it and expand it. See. And so for me, when women begin to do that, you will see the transformation in the public, in the private too. And that's for me where the shift will happen. The younger women, they have to be courageous to be the best that they can be. You know, leap into the future because the future is waiting for them.